It's going to be a quick ride to Victor Harbour today. Very, very difficult not to use a lot of nervous energy on a stage like this. After yesterday's stage, there'll be very few riders who don't have heavy legs. So even though on paper this stage looks like a breeze, it'll be no coastal cruise. The sprinters teams will not want to let a breakaway take the honours. So at some stage, they'll have to push through the fatigue and take up the chase. The whole stage revolves around the sprint into Victor Harbour. And for the first time here, the riders will complete four laps of a 13 kilometre circuit to complete the stage. That will give everyone the chance to recon the finish zone before that final sprint. Everybody seemingly want to get themselves stuck into this one now. The battle for position will really intensify in the last 10 kilometres, but it's the last wide open section at two and a half kilometres to go that gives teams a final chance to move to the front before a sharp left-hand turn followed by a series of roundabouts and corners which make it extremely difficult to improve your position. To this point, the riders have already raced 140 kilometres. We'll see a 60 kilometre an hour drag race to this bottleneck, 1.2 kilometres to go. 148 riders trying to squeeze themselves into a five metre wide gap. It's absolutely vital to get through this section at the front if you're to have any chance for victory. There's some tricky corners coming up now. To win this stage, statistically, you must be in the first six riders out of this final corner and onto the Victor Harbour Esplanade. Last year, one of the best riders in the field, Richie Port, lost a whopping eight seconds in the space of 600 metres when the peloton split on the run to the finish. When Simon Gerrans won the stage, he received a 10 second time bonus. That's a net gain of 18 seconds. When you consider that Richie Port lost the Santos Tour Down Under by just nine seconds, it shows that this race can be won or lost at any point.